Hi, I'm Henkel Valentine and I'm from Burdale in Portland, deep rural Rio Grande Valley. And I've just completed my PhD in biochemistry as of May 4th. And I'm Tashana Walker from Trenchtown, Rima, 3rd Street. And I am a PhD candidate in urban geography at Rutgers University. So coming from a deep rural community um, in Jamaica, you know that you're faced with many challenges, um, opportunities sometimes are lacking, and there it requires a particular push, a particular drive to, in order to achieve certain things. But thankfully, growing up, I had the support of my parents who saw from very early that in order for their child, who was from a financially challenged background, to succeed, education was that key um, to unlocking those doors and those opportunities. And so my parents pushed me from, the, from basic school. They ensured that I knew that in order for me to achieve what I wanted, I had to focus and I had to achieve everything I could um, in an academic arena. And so like being here today, it's because of that drive and that push from my parents. Yeah, and um, for me, it's a similar, you know, motivation behind, you know, this PhD and where I'm now. Uh, everybody knows Trenchtown. Everybody knows the nature of the community, the history of the community. Very violent, very volatile. But, you know, as a young, ambitious person coming from Trenchtown, it's an it's a uphill battle. And I've had a lot of help along the way to reach this point. And my current research now, which is on... Trenchtown is inspired by, you know, my experiences there, um, experiences through crime and violence and also, you know, policing, militarization, all of that. So I'm very excited about my work and really proud of all that I've accomplished to date. All right. And so, you know, from an, from an early age, um, I... I kind of, I would, I would say, excelled in certain academic, um, um, uh, certain academic, uh, I guess, endeavors. endeavors. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, I, I was always involved in the, the little competitions, the maths competitions, um, schools challenge quiz. In fact, in, in high school, I represented Teachville in schools challenge quiz. And... You know, it, it, it's common in Jamaica where it, the, it's the urban schools that do well. Um, so, you know, you have the, the, the big names up there. And so the, the country schools, as we call them, typically they make it to the third round and all of that. But in, I think, 2011, um, my, my teammates and I, we, we, we thought that we're going to change that narrative. We're going to... Um, do something different and so we were like one of the first um, small school well Tichil is definitely not a small school but one of the first country schools to make it to the finals like one of the underdogs so I remember we played um, Kingston College in the 2011 finals um, the first time and we lost but it was just this major achievement for us Unfortunately, like we kind of inspired other country schools to do well, and so our our team again the subsequent year um made it to the finals, and I think we had made it to like three back to back finals. We lost all three, but then we eventually won in twenty sixteen. So we made like five finals in six years. So you know, like that's something growing up like that determination and that drive to constantly change your narrative and change what you're supposed to achieve. I think coming from my early years, I was able to transition that into my achievements in high school and even going forward. Yeah. And I think for me, it's, um, I've endeavored, I've never limited myself. I mean, that's attributed to my parents that they've never put any restrictions on what I can or cannot achieve. It's more so, you know, anything I want, say, yo, go for it. They always, I always have their support 100%. So I've never limited myself. 
And I remember going to Woolmans. I was very active in school. I went to, you know, I tried to get myself involved in all the clubs and societies. So I was always president of this, vice president, you know, whatever is going on. And I used to, um, you know, participate in these smaller clubs and societies. The less popular ones, you know, like maths club. Although I never really 200 at maths, but, <laughs> you know, I did maths club, science club. And then, you know, I just did my thing. And when I reached sixth form, they, you know, chose head girl. And, you know, the, the staff or the teachers at Woolmers decided that, you know, I was capable and had, you know, great leadership potential. And I resonated with the students well. And so I became head girl of Woolmers Girls School. And it was a very rewarding experience. It was fun and challenging. But I think that really set me on a path to, you know, the success that I have achieved to date um, because I really got a lot of support from the Woolmas alumni and, you know, persons really started to buy into my um, story to say, okay, well, this girl from Trenchtown, you know, like, she's not just smart, she has these other talents and, you know, I got that support that I needed to get me to where I am today. Yeah, um, so I attended the University of the West Indies. Um, initially, I, I wanted to do, um, well, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So um, like, <laughs> like most students, student. that, that do sciences. <laughs> so I got into the Faculty of Pure and Applied Sciences. I did my first year. Um, somehow, um, by some chance, I ended up doing a marine biology degree. Um, it, it it turned out that I was I was good at it. Um, I got some good grades and stuff like that, and so I finished my undergrad with a first class honors, and still never knew what I wanted to do. But um, fortunately, my brother um, had put me in touch with somebody uh, who was doing biochemistry at that time. And so she recruited me and she turned out to be my supervisor, um, Dr. Simone Vadal. And so I started a biochemistry graduate degree with, with no experience in biochemistry. So I had to like, learn everything from scratch. Well, I also did one of those unconventional degrees. I did geography, but I really loved geography and I was inspired to do geography from my experiences at Woolmans. Um, I had a really fantastic geography teacher and you know she really garnered that love I had for geography and so I went on to UA, did an undergrad graduate degree in geography and I know I'm doing a PhD in geography as well. <laughs> yeah um, so because I got a first class honors right um, I applied for the graduate scholarship at UA. And fortunately, I got it. Um, I got it in my second year of graduate school. And so that actually ties into how Tashana and I met. Yeah. Um, because, well, she'll tell you her <laughs> part. <laughs> well, this is my version. Um, so we both got the UA postgraduate scholarship. And uh, we, we weren't sure when it was going to be dispersed. So we saw each other in the parking lot at UA, and I had met a Henkel before, but you know we just we were back in first year. Yeah, back in first year, but we didn't communicate or anything like that. We just knew each other existed, but you know. So we saw each other in the parking lot, and I said, "Hey, get your scholarship money," <laughs> and you know he said no, and said he would check it out, and he sent a few emails. We exchanged numbers. And the rest is kind of history. Uh, <laughs> we always said that we're the same person, just Different. one is from country and one is from the ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> and so we have a lot of qualities that mirror each other. Right. And I think that's why our, you know, our relationship is so strong and so beautiful. Right. Um, I think if I if she was from um Burdale in Portland and I was from Trenchtown, we I would be her and she would be me yeah. based on based on just you know, we resonate certain qualities. Mm -hmm. But um yeah. So like I 
I did biochemistry for my graduate degree where we were focusing on developing a prostate cancer cell line, um, which was a very difficult task. And so the fact that this was something new, completely new to Jamaica, new to the Caribbean, as a matter of fact, the development of the prostate cancer cell, uh, prostate cancer cell line, um, there is a really low success rate. And so... And it was from a, the first, uh, we were trying to develop the first black prostate cancer cell line from the Caribbean. And it would also end up being w one of only two in the world. Mm -hmm. And so there was like many challenges um, attempting to do this as a, a graduate degree. But thankfully I had somebody who was also doing a PhD who understood like the rigors and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, she was she was here initially, but then she had to migrate because her um, endeavors, academic endeavors, um, took her elsewhere from UA to Rutgers, and so that was something that we had to navigate mm -hmm. even during you know those PhD years. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, after the after we got together, um, that first year. I got accepted to Rutgers and so I left and we did uh maybe two years or a year and a half of long distance which didn't even really feel like long yeah. distance yeah. but I, I was I was always in the US or she was always in Jamaica so yeah every chance we got we we tried to see each other and we talked like every day round the clock yeah. and it's really good that both of us were both PhD students. Well, yeah. PhD students still PhD, <laughs> you know, holder now. But it was really good that we're both in the same, you know, academic arena, arena and we could really, you know, bounce ideas off each other, even though we're from different disciplines altogether, and just share that, sharing the difficulty and the triumphs and. You know, we really understood what each other was going through at each point in the program. Right. So, so um, I decided to lock her down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I decided to um, ask her for her hand in marriage um, this October, last October. Um, so we actually got engaged on my birthday. Uh, we, we had, she had planned a beautiful trip for for my for my birthday. And, you know, because I figured she was so smart and intuitive, like there was no other way that I could have um, had proposed um, without she finding out. And so um, that was the only camouflage I could use my birthday. And thankfully, yeah. she said yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, so we're getting married this, this, this this year um and we're we're looking forward to it mm -hmm. um i've i've completed a, a chapter in my life in finalizing my phd mm -hmm. and developing a prostate cancer cell line um and she's doing her graduate work yeah. and hopefully she'll be wrapping up soon yes <laughs> <laughs> and we're looking forward to you know being husband and wife yeah. and you know continuing this epic journey Right. together right and we, we recognize that um supporting each other is important mm -hmm. but we are we're also thankful for the support of others yeah. um for me personally i couldn't have been here right now talking to you about my journey without the support of my parents without the support of persons in my community mm -hmm. from Berrydale, where i'm originally from but also st Margaret's bay where i grew up Mm -hmm. um, persons from high school, university, mm -hmm. like godparents, all of these persons, mm -hmm. you know, just even the small encouragements that you get on a regular day, I couldn't have been here without it and I'm extremely thankful mm -hmm. and um, I hope that like just like how I was inspired by a lot of people around me and a lot of persons encouraged me that eventually our story can encourage others and we can play positive um i guess uh, well i don't like the idea of a role model but positive influences in in person's lives yeah and yeah i echo the same sentiments uh we we are 
you know, these PhD students and we are from very humble beginnings, like just like many of people watching this right now. As I said, I'm from Trenchtown, my mother and my father, regular people, you know, <laughs> that were very heavily invested in their children's upbringing, my sister and I. And so they did everything that they needed to do to help us to achieve all our dreams, all our goals, all our academic pursuits. And, you know, that really pushed us to become the women that we are today. And so we hope that, you know, just by sharing a little bit of our story today, that you guys will be inspired or encouraged to, you know, in the face of ad adversity, just be relentless, keep pushing, and you can achieve whatever you set your mind to.